Hey guys, welcome to the first ever edition of NFL Uncorked. I'm so excited to have you guys watch this. This is just a new hobby for me. Um, one of my girlfriends, Monique Shields, helped me come up with this concept. We were talking over glasses of wine. Actually, let's let's be honest, it was a few bottles of wine. Just about how I can get back to doing like my passion and what I'm interested in. So I basically came up with the concept. It's for women who love football and wine, of course. Mm, this is so good. So basically just, I'm going to be talking about different things in football, you know, the hottest topics, what's going on for the week, all sorts of different things, talking to different women, especially ones that I work with on camera, even behind the scenes, there's so many people that you don't know. There's so many women that work in this field that are badasses on top of that, and they know their sports. So, and even though it's for girls, I'll have some guys on from time to time, maybe even a player or two. We'll see who I can kind of like nudge to do this for me. And just having fun. Like, I just want this to be something that is for women. Something that, you know, just football and freaking wine. How can you not love that? So, let's talk football. I'm a huge Rams fan. Decided for the first episode to have... Dick Vermeil's wine, Coach Dick Vermeil, um, he has 34 on there for when the Rams won Super Bowl 34, greatest show on time, what, what? And I lived in St. Louis and I moved out to Los Angeles to work for the NFL Network, literally right before the Rams moved back to LA. No, I did not have anything to do with that. So when the Rams beat the Saints in the NFC Championship game, I was extremely emotional, but it was happy tears and it was also sad tears because I just, I miss, all the people that I used to tailgate with back in St. Louis, like every Sunday, nine o'clock, I'd go to the gas station because you couldn't buy alcohol before nine o'clock. So I'd go get a case of beer. I'd make my spaghetti, all sorts of stuff. I'd marinate pork steaks. Like we had so much fun. It brought the city together. So many different people, white, black. It didn't even matter if you love football and you like drinking. You were there on Sunday tailgating. So it was just, we talked about this moment and making it to the Super Bowl again and being good and just have that feeling being like, oh yeah, Rams, nobody can tell us nothing, nobody can stop us. We made the Super Bowl, it was just like, crap. I felt so alone because I was in a Manhattan Beach bar, there was a lot of people that I didn't know, there were some Rams fans, didn't know really anybody, it was with my girl. And I just, it just, it made me, I got a little homesick. So it was like happy tears, I can't believe we made it, and sad tears because it's like, yo, I wish I could be in this moment with like the people that were in the like pits of hell with me, man. You know what I mean? Anywho, I wiped my tears and I headed to Atlanta to watch the Rams take on the Patriots. I went there. I recorded everything that I could with a selfie stick and the iPhone. Yes, I was that girl walking around Atlanta, hot Atlanta with a selfie stick and a freaking iPhone and tried to capture as much as I can to show you guys. But here's what I have. So I just got to Hotlanta, got to the hotel, and now I'm getting ready to go to the Around the NFL podcast to go watch them live. What's more likely, you said Rock has more receiving yards than any player, or Todd Gurley has more yards from scrimmage than any player. Mm. What's more likely? Hey, so I'm out on Radio Row. Um, Waka Flocka just actually passed by me. Browns tight end David Njoku became one of my favorite players. I thought Colts linebacker Darius Leonard was hilarious. I even got into a fashion showdown with Vikings quarterback Xavier Rhodes. We got, <laughs> we got Reggie Bush in the house. What's going on over here? Did you win that game that you guys played on the set? Well, no, I lost because Camaro's terrible. Oh. Bad at, he's bad at, <laughs> he's bad at giving, <laughs> he's bad at giving clues, man. So he, I, he guessed everyone that I, that I uh, <laughs> that I was giving him clues on. Okay. No, we were playing uh, heads up. You know the game heads up. Oh yeah. yeah. You put the card on your. Oh, head. We played yeah, that yeah, for New Year's. Yeah. Did you guess it? He was. That, he was terrible. That's not his skill set. He was like the worst. <laughs> giving me the worst clues ever. I'm prepared this time. If you do shots again. All right, let's do it. Dan. I am at the NFL tailgate party before the freaking Rams take on the Patriots. I'm so freaking pumped. We have Alan Black on stage. All the songs are already getting me emotional. Like, I'm so excited. I'm here with my brother.
game. Still got my beer though. Still got my beer though. Still got my beer. I'm still holding. I'm still holding. Ain't that some ish? I was not expecting to lose that game. Like I said, I just was in the moment. I'm there with my brother. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna tell my grandkids about this experience when the Rams beat the Patriots and it's like redemption and it didn't happen. And then I was like, what? And then I was like, whoa, I'm really drunk. And yeah, so, but overall it was a great experience. So I'm just excited for what's in store now. We've made it there. Hopefully we can keep some of our key players. It's gonna be interesting off season for us, but I know Les Snead has that ish locked down. Like he's just, Man, the moves he made last year are the reason that we got to the Super Bowl. So I love freaking Sean McVay. Hopefully I get to meet him one day. I'm gonna give him a huge hug because I just, I was a little skeptical at first because of his age, but dude is a freaking football genius. Like I just, I don't know how he does what he does, but I love what he does. And I'm just, I'm so excited for this team, the players, especially the ones that have been on the squad since back in St. Louis. Like I know what they've been through. I went through it with them and being the, the losing, the laughing stock of the league, it freaking sucks. And now it's like, you know what? We're gonna win a Super Bowl soon. I believe in that. And now the really funny thing is when you're at the tailgate, they'll give you, there's like a section where you can write on a postcard, literally this, a Super Bowl postcard. So I usually send one to like my mom and my nephew, my sister and my brother, and I send one to myself too. So I get home from the Super Bowl and this crap comes in the mail. Literally, sadness right here. It says, I can't believe I'm at the Super Bowl. The Rams are gonna win the damn thing, yes. For the next episode, I'm having my girl Colleen Wolf on here. You know her from Thursday Night Football and from Good Morning Football Weekend Edition. Um, she's the anchor for the show and she's amazing. Not only is she a badass chick and knows her stuff, she's so humble, she's so down to earth. Like, I, ugh, I just heart her so much. And so she's gonna join me on the second episode and we're just gonna, you know, have a few glasses, maybe bottles of wine, and just talk football. Thank you so much for watching. Do not drink and drive, and hopefully you join me on this journey of NFL on court. Cheers. Ouch. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot.